emotion Ear training is what gives you the ability to identify auditory stimuli with your ears alone. It's what lets a musician identify this as a major chord performed on a piano. If your level of ear training is a little bit more advanced, you might be able to identify this as a spread voicing for that major triad in first inversion. And if you happen to have perfect pitch, you also might be able to identify the actual notes, which are F sharp, D, and A. This form of ear training is called harmonic melodic ear training, and it can be invaluable for the performing musician. Sound engineers might understand the sound a little bit differently. They too will recognize that it is a piano. However, they'll probably hone in on the fact that there was an ugly resonance in or around 500 hertz, and they might want to correct it with EQ. Ah, yeah, that's better. This form of ear training is called frequency spectrum ear training, and it can be very useful for sound engineers for balancing mixes both live and in the recording studio. Both of these forms of ear training are ontological or taxonomic. They seek to classify a particular sound so that you may relate it to other sounds that you have heard in the future. This ontological understanding of what we're hearing is very useful, but there's another side of this. We can also approach ear training with a phenomenological understanding of it, how we experience the music versus what the music is. You probably have already had a little bit of a phenomenological understanding of ear training already, just because most of the time when teachers are teaching major and minor chords, they'll say that major chords are happy and minor <laughs> chords are sad. This directly relates to the emotional content that we find in music and our experience of music as it is. I always found it a little bit unfortunate that teachers stopped with major being happy and minor being sad. For example, what is augmented? Huh? Or minor seven flat five for that matter. This emotional understanding of ear training is extremely important because it's how everybody experiences music. Everybody has music affect them in some way. It's a side of ear training that unfortunately rarely gets explored, partly because it's extremely difficult to translate musical ideas into verbal and emotional language, and also partly because there's a degree of subjectivity to it. For example, for one person, a melody might be wistful and yearning, but for another person, it might be acrid and bitter. In this way, I like to think about the famous parable of the five blind men who each touch a different part of an elephant to figure out what it is. Each one feels a different part of the elephant, like the leg or the tail or the tusk, and when they compare notes, they can't agree on what the animal is, even though they've all been experiencing the same thing, the elephant. In this way, music can be very similar. Still, it can be extremely illuminating to pay attention to your own personal reactions to specific musical stimuli. I once attended a masterclass conducted by Stefan Harris, the vibraphone player, where he suggested keeping a journal of your own personal reactions to chord qualities as a means of identifying them. Instead of trying to simply remember what a dominant seventh with a flat nine and a natural 13 sounds like, you can think about how you feel when you listen to it, and then identify with that emotion whenever you hear that chord. Since emotional understanding is directly linked with language, you have the opportunity to get quite poetic with your descriptions of intervals or chords or scales. It can actually be a creative endeavor in its own right. Bear in mind, it would be simplistic to reduce a piece of music to the atomistic progression of chords and then their individual emotional responses. A chord progression and a piece of music in general is more than just the sum of its parts. Just to show you what I mean by this, I've annotated a few of my emotional responses to the first couple chords of Chopin's Prelude Number no. 4 in E minor. This is kind of a fun exercise because there's no real rules to it, but the more that you think along these lines, the more that you're gonna be able to form connections with all the kinds of music you listen to and the music that you play.
that note, this has been Adam Neely with Adam Neely's Bass Lessons. I'm having a new lesson every Monday afternoon, so please comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know of any ideas for lessons you would like to have in the future. Thanks for watching, and remember, keep it emotional. Thank <laughs> you.